Wrong button. Marcus, I'm hitting wrong buttons again. What, what, what is this, 2018 all over again? I'm a baby group. Uh, I fucking hated that bit. <laughs> so AEW just announced a uh, community outreach team and apartment. Oh, good, Cody. Good. Good, good Cody, because that's what we need. We have a mission to do something positive in every community we visit. You mean, like, leaving? Contact us to help identify the best charities and partners. Community that dot impact. Yep. Yep. Community dot impact at all Elliot wrestling dot com. <sighs> Everything Cody Rhodes does just makes me think shill. You're a shill. Although it's finally giving Big Show and Mark Henry something to do. So I guess that's something. Guess. So here we are to talk wrestling. Uh, before we start, we're not doing, um, we're not doing any type of uh, lucha look back this week. Episode four will be reviewed next week with Slammiversary and Money in the Bank this week, uh, as well as the uh, just the the lateness and because we we're recording on a Wednesday. Usually we do Tuesdays, so so it's just no lucha look back this week. We are still doing a making an impact review and Slammiversary, but considering all that we watched this week. Just something had to get blown by the wayside. Uh, so maybe what we'll do is we'll double up next week just so we can have staying the course. But we'll talk about that later. With that said, we got some big news over the last, like, the last 24 hours. So, like, it, whenever this happens, whenever we have to delay, the wrestling gods go, we got you, homie. Even if uh, Powerbomb Jitsu kind of low-key hates us. <laughs> Yeah, I was. I had to. I had to tell. I'm like, wait a minute, because I'm on the outside until we outside looking in until we do the shows. I'm like, wait a minute, are we beefed out? Because I'm, because <laughs> I'll stop retweeting that stuff now. <laughs> so we have like like a friendly rivalry. So we tweeted out last night. We're not recording tonight, but tomorrow instead. Power bomb goes good. So I'm like, shut your whore mouth. Love you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's nothing but cantankerous love. It's, we're like an old married couple who are constantly cheating on one another and finding new ways to make the kids hate the other partner. Don't worry, we're gonna win in the end. <laughs> Somehow. Alright, so with that said, uh, we're, we're going into the first story. It's CM Punk apparently negotiating a return according to Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful. I will say this about Sean Ross Sapp. I think he's a giant douche. But... He does not report things without a good source. So, so in that regard, I, I don't think I like him because I don't, but I trust him as far as I can throw him. But that's as far as you need to trust someone when it comes to wrestling rumors. So, like, he, he meets the bare minimum criteria of, of not being completely side-eyed by me. It's not like wrestle votes who everyone just, like, gloms onto and it's like, ah. Oh. Although they are right sometimes. Like, respect where it's due. But then again... Saying, oh yeah, Goldberg's coming back for Summer Slam. I could have told you that. I don't even have any sources in the WWE anymore. I could have told you that. <laughs> Fucking hell. Ah, it was, it's an easy call. Oh, you're going to use Goldberg at your biggest live event show of the season? I'm shocked. <laughs> it's like that episode of South Park where Stan tries to show people that, that, um, that mystics and, and, and mind readers and, and whatnot, the paranormal investigators are like frauds because they always go, I'm feeling, I'm feeling November's very important to somebody. Is, does, does anyone have very strong feelings for November? And then they just like fucking screw with people that way. I feel like that's what some you know, r- reporters do. And, and he, here's the thing that always kind of bothers me about Russell Bros. How do you have so many sources, but you don't monetize it? Like, does, does, has that ever struck anyone else as weird? Like, they don't have a website. They just tweet things. Yeah, it's weird because I feel like, like I've seen them. I feel like them being the the quote unquote scoopers, the new new wave of scoopers, didn't happen until like, not like fairly recently in terms of like a couple of years. Mm-hmm. So I don't know what happened or, or who that is. Maybe that's. I don't know, some mystery person uh, that everybody knows, but just because well, a lot of people do that. Like, it'll be the, the people create, you know, celebrities do, like, fake accounts to, to be, like, a-holes because they can't do it from there. So they'll just be looking at other people's stuff. 
Somehow Kevin Durant always comes back on this show. <laughs> Damn it, I just lost my hair. <laughs> don't lose your hair. You don't need to be Kevin Durant. Thankfully, Kevin Durant is so tall you can't tell he's bald. So, you know, there's that. Uh, but so anyway, Fightful is reporting that Sam Punk is is negotiating a return to the ring. Now, this one, unlike the next story we're going to talk about, is not really guaranteed uh, for anything other than uh, a p- potential match. The story goes like this. Uh, let, me, let me click on Fightfuls because I don't trust the source that I'm looking at. You must be 18 or older. Oh, it's a, it's a Patreon exclusive. That's why. Okay. Never mind. We'll, 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 go, we'll go back to Wrestling Inc. Uh, the story basically says that uh, uh, the most likely place for him to return is AEW, but a contract hasn't been signed, nor has a timetable, turn date, or creative plans been put in place. The report noted CM, uh, simply that Punk and a company official have been talking about him wrestling once again. Uh, the report stated that they haven't confirmed with Punk or AEW officials about the news, but we're told that higher-ups in WWE believe that Punk is going to AEW. With fans returning other companies have been said to be interested in Punk, but no specific offers have reportedly been made. So, Marcus, two questions. One, do you believe the report that Punk is coming back? And two, should he? Do you want him to? Are you interested in seeing him again? Uh, I mean, I think it'll be good for wrestling. I'm not geeked up by any means to see him. I don't never need I never need to see Punk in another wrestling ring again. Um uh, not to say I got in disdain for the guy or anything. He just wasn't um wasn't somebody that, Yeah, it wasn't my club of tea. I think the the most I've been was into him I mean that whole bit and to see him get the way he got to was incredible. But I think I liked seeing him come up in ECW doing that whole thing because it was like watching somebody, you know, build those building blocks but uh yeah i think it'd be great for wrestling i mean obviously he's been literally trending all day so obviously he has a lot of people that would be geeked up to see him now in terms of where he goes i mean i mean at this point i feel like it's only two places he will go specifically one because i don't know how that blood still is between him and his uh and wwe but uh yeah i definitely think it's possible you know um I may have gotten bored, you know, time heals all wounds, the whole thing about they always go back. Um, yeah, I absolutely think it's possible, though. You know, specifically if he's gotten that, the fighting of it all out of his system, you know. Yeah, and, and, and well, he is doing commentary for, I forget which MMA promotion, but it's a smaller regional one that airs on um, the UFC Fight Pass. So... We'll see if if any of that is uh, is true at all. So, it, it, it's certainly interesting. Yeah, certainly interesting. I for one wouldn't mind seeing him return to wrestling. In fact, if he does sign with AEW, it'll give me a reason to tune in. Mm-hmm. But you know that's that that's a big if. I do got to point out that I'm not exactly down with. AEW sending like a thousand new dudes all at once because it kind of, you know, takes away from, from some of the credibility. But Chad, that's where they'll get over it. Because mm-hmm. they'll book them correct. They've always been meant to be booked. Like they're properly booking Phoenix and Pentagon and Sean Spears and uh, <laughs> all the guys that apparently had Dark Side of the Rings this year. Uh, no thank you. <laughs> Uh, no, thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, next up, we have uh, a certain American Dragon. He's uh, apparently on his final countdown to signing a new contract with the company, and apparently it's rumored to be, of course, AEW. Dad, I don't know why. I don't know why at all. There's so many better options out there, but, you know, what are you going to do? Mark, is when it comes to AEW, signing Brian Danielson, Daniel Bryan, former WWE champion, world WWE champion, Ring of Honor world champion, are you at all excited about this one? Because, you know, Punk's one thing, but this is this is Danielson, former Daniel, Brian Daniel. Yeah, I mean, I'm, you know, obviously yet another huge signing. Uh, we, we all know who Brian is and what he means to the business, and, you know, I definitely still think he got something in the tank, and, 
I don't know. I mean, he looked like he had a pretty dictated a lot of his pace before he left uh, for his last bit of running WWE. Obviously, he's a what a father of two now. Mm-hmm. Um, specific with you know, I imagine one is fairly young, so I would imagine he kind of want to reduce schedule. I don't know how rigorous that would be with AEW, but <clears throat> in terms of just going there, obviously to be new waters, new competition, uh, definitely a different booking style, and. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't. Like I said, I mean, everybody else is popping up there. You know, nobody saw Big Show and Mark Henry coming. Um, of course, nobody would have put money on it either. But uh, even if they knew beforehand. So, yeah, <clears throat> it, it's definitely possible. I can, I can see it. I mean, they, if they end up by some type of way, like getting both of them on the same show, they, they certainly gonna it certainly will be a tea bag on Vince, if nothing else. Um. But, you know, and, and it, it'll get us to tune in more regularly, but still, it's like, you know, it, it's only so much you can do with so much. Mm-hmm. I think that's the, I think that's the big thing with all this. Only so much you can do when you have so much. So, Well, they are launching. I mean, technically, they, they are about to have four shows. They have Dynamite, Rampage, Dark, and Dark Elevation. Stupid fucking names. But whatever. So I understand the need for uh, just a gluttony of, t- of talent, but I don't know. Yeah. I-, I feel like we have enough shows. I don't need to be tuning in Friday, yeah. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Happy days. Yeah, I'm good. I mean, I'm right there. Yeah, man. I mean, Netflix is going to drop some fire. I ain't got time to be <laughs> so engulfed in every little thing of wrestling. Like, you know, I, we both be needing breaks. Mm-hmm. You know, I love this. I love, it. but we be need. I mean, we need breaks. And like you said, I mean, you got. They wanted to watch the main show, the dark, which I refuse to. Um, that's like their main event uh, for me. Um, is Rampage supposed to be some type of game show? Or is that something else? I think it's supposed to be their SmackDown. Okay. I okay. Think. So that's that. Then Elevation is supposed to be something. So. Like, I get it, and that's that smart, specifically, like you said, when they're bringing in all that talent. But, you know, you kind of got to keep a certain level of energy across the board. Um, so, we'll, I mean, it'll be interesting seeing if they can do that. But, again, look like TNT going all in on them, so that's, you know, that's kudos to them. But, uh, like I said, they want to watch those four shows, and apparently you're supposed to keep up with the being the elite thing, which I've dropped off a while back. So, yeah. I think most people have dropped off the uh, being the elite I mean, you got a thousand hours of TV time. Like, what, what, what are you guys doing? Like, what are you, what are you guys doing? So, the, the report of Brian Danielson coming in apparently came from Cassidy Haynes of Body Slam Dat and that. I've never heard of either of those things. So, this is a, a new, new day for all of us. Yes, it is. Uh, apparently, Sean Rossap is going to bat for Mr. Haynes, saying that he's aware of the sources that Haynes has, or at least is aware that Haynes has reliable sources. Maybe not necessarily the identity of who they are, but he knows that they are high caliber. So he, he's lending credence to Haynes's authenticity, not so much the story. Yeah. So like if, if, if Marcus were to say, I'm black, and you don't know who Marcus is, but I go, yeah, I know he's black, so, so you can verify that off of me. That's essentially what he's saying, only without saying that Haynes is black. I'm pretty sure Haynes is white. I don't know. But that's essentially what this is. It, it, it's secondhand confirmation on the integrity of the individual, not so much secondhand confirmation on the story. So I will say this. As much of a schmuck as I think Sean Rossap is, he, he's de- developed a nice old name for himself. He, he has a lot of respectability in the industry, and, and four or five years ago he did. So kudos to him for, 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 uh, for doing that. I, on the other hand, have pissed off the entire city of New York. <laughs> What? Yes. You would think that that would be very hard to do. It was not, I assure you. I wrote an article because I'm getting sick and tired of all these New York Knicks fans going, hey, we'll give you Kevin Knox, a bum, and and a late first-round pick, which is basically a second-round pick in the NBA, which is basically useless, for Colin Sexton, and you'll take it. I'm like, no, that's a terrible trade. And then someone's like, well, we'll give you Obi Toppin and Kevin Knox. I'm like, two bums and a late first. You're high. So I wrote an article saying, no, this is what we expect back. And it was Obi Toppin and Kevin Knox f- 
three first round picks, a second round pick, all from the 2021 draft, as well as uh, Manuel Quickly, who I just I am, I think he's fantastic, and uh, R.J. Barrett, who I think is very much overhyped, and I think this is as good as he's ever going to be. And everyone in New York, everyone in New York came at me, man. The last three days I've been sitting here reading, you're a clown, you're an idiot, you're stupid, oh, you're a typical Cleveland fan. And I'm just sitting here going, that's right, New York. Feed into the ego. Prove everyone right that you are the most obnoxious sports fan. You can well, deliver it, but you cannot take it. Well, even though New York has a certain representation, Chad, you are my friend, my brother. And those people can piss off. But if you are still feeling away, even with all that being said, at the end of the day, you're not this guy. Uh, did you send me? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's a Jordan Grace tweet. That, that's always a bad sign for what's about to come next. And here I was thinking I was giving him a bargain. All right, so we're going to read this. So, so before we get back to the news, is it possible – is it is possible a session? Oh my god, I hate people. Is 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 oh. possible a session with you in a room, not fucking? I know you are married, and I said you farting in my face for fifteen minutes is possible. And how much? A hundred grand, one hundred, or one hundred thousand? Can you read? Are you crazy? That's my price. Bye. I can smell your farts for free, sneaking into the ladies' bath and sitting in one of the toilets for free. And yet, still, I think the people commenting on my article is worse. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? This is what I get for scrolling. Jesus. I think the real messed up part is that there is a number for her to do that. Oh. I want to point that out. If someone said that to me, I'd be like, nah, I'm good, homie. Uh, so no for me, dog. Like, no, I just need a proper price that makes me feel better about <laughs> Uh, there isn't enough not, money in the world that would get me to agree to, to do that. I'm like, sorry, I'm but a- dignity costs something. <laughs> you're like, I'm not asking for sex. I know you're married, and I watched the Pure Tournament. I'm not asking for sex. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at least in that scenario, he's aware of who he's fucking with. Oh, my God, man. So, yeah, here's hoping that AEW becomes Ring of Honor from t- 2004. We got more 2004 in us coming at you, which is the name of this week's show, but we'll, we'll, we'll get there. Uh, before we go there, we have to go back to, to Japan because apparently there's, there's some issues with the Kota Ibushi. Uh, apparently, New Japan announced that he has been out of competition since the beginning of summer struggle due to a serious illness. After a careful investigation and thorough assessment, he's been diagnosed with aspiration pneumonia. I'm not sure what aspiration means in conjunction with pneumonia, but pneumonia is never a, a chill thing. It's not like having a cold. If you have pneumonia, you have a severe buildup of, of liquid in your lungs. And that can cause your organs to shut down. Now, I don't know what the aspiration means. Maybe it's, like, super motivating. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I, I say that, and I think I figured it out. I think it's very aggressive, and it spreads. That, that'd be my thought process. Let's Google this and find out what it means. <laughs> Let's do an on-air diagnostic. So aspiration pneumonia is a type of pneumonia that might occur if a person breathes something in instead of swallowing it. Ah, the germs for, from... Okay, so basically aspiration pneumonia isn't an illness like pneumonia. It's a physical condition that derived from swallowing, say, too much water. Like you drink water and it goes down. and Because you, you, you've heard the term before, the wrong pipe before, right? You drink water, yeah. you cough. Oh, it must have gone down the wrong pipe. I, that's a real thing that can happen. Oh, no, absolutely. So apparently uh, he, that apparently happened while he was eating or, or doing something because it says saliva, vomit, and or substances may affect the airways. So apparently <clears throat> aspiration pneumonia, I, I guess, isn't as serious as traditional pneumonia. Um, in severe cases, surgery is performed in order to relieve fluid in the lungs or to install a chest tube. If these treatments are not applied soon enough, aspiration pneumonia can be fatal. Um, <clears throat> Let's see, uh, what are the complications? Five, pneumonia. So, yeah, you know, it's not good, but it, it does seem like they don't expect him to be out long. Um, in order to give uh, Bushi time to recover, he will be absent from the cards on the 22nd and 23rd in Osaka and the 24th in Nagoya. A final decision on his partition at Wrestle Grand Slam on the 25th will be made after assessing Bushi's recovery. So, 
they only expect him to be down for less than a week. So this story was not as serious as I thought it was. <laughs> and thankfully, thankfully so. No, nobody wants to see the Ibushi de- dealing with, 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 with uh, uh, me- medical issues. So I wonder how regular those particular cases are. Cause that's my first time hearing about that. It I'm like, like It's like a near freak, like a medical freak accident. Because I wouldn't be surprised if it's common in people who were like drowning and were saved, but like swallowed a lot of water. <clears throat> because I remember a while ago, I want to yeah. say like 2007, 2008, because I think it was over a Wii. Uh, a radio show, I think it was a, a national radio show, had like seven or eight people on, and they are like, all right, you're gonna you know drink as much water as possible. The person who drinks the most wins. Some woman won. And like she, she won like a like a, a game station. I forget, I, I forgot what it was. I think I think it was a Wii, but it could have been a Wii U. It could have been a PS4. I don't remember. But she drank so much water that she actually drowned to death. <clears throat> so, you know, it, it's possible. Yeah, it's it's interesting because I watched these uh those nine one one shows on Fox, and uh, there was an episode where a kid was in a hospital, and uh, I think he he passed out, and then it ended up being uh condition called delayed drowning hmm we had a uh thing blocking his ass wave it, it looked like something it looked like one thing but it was something else so it was like man that's that's just crazy man like you said she drank herself to death yeah that's, that's weird that stuff can happen i mean it really can like your, your body can only digest so much at one time uh, yeah. I, will, I will say this every time, because I, I know you're a big fan of the 911 series. Cause I know there's 911, 911 Houston, I think, or San Antonio, Texas. Oh. Lone yeah. Star. Lone Star, that's what it is. And I think there's a third one coming. But every time you bring up the show, I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember that show from the 1990 Rescue 911. And then I realize, oh, wait, that's never the show you're talking about. And I get instantly depressed. <laughs> So, uh, good good health to Kota Ibushi going forward. Yeah. Speaking of good health, the dashing one, Chris Bay, may in fact be in line for a pretty big push, not just in Impact, but in wrestling in general, because he was offered a Bullet Club shirt after the events of Slam Version. Now, this is not a spoiler, so like, if you're like, hey, 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 calm down. After the events, he uh, he did a uh, there's a little tweet put out by Slam uh, by Impact after Slam Anniversary, and Bay finds a Bullet Club shirt in his gear essentially. So things are heating up. We know that Jay White's part of Impact at least for the interim. And could we see Bullet Club Impact? Marcus, one, I I don't I'm, I, I I don't need to ask the question. I, I know the answer. I'm gonna ask it anyway. One, are you excited about Chris Bay joining? Bullet Club, if he does. And two, do you think that we're going to have a Bullet Club impact? Kind of like the old uh, NWO, uh, not, yeah, NWO Japan. I don't know, man. I, I, you know, I want nothing but good stuff and all the forward momentum from somebody like Bay. He seems like a good guy, hell of a talent, obviously. So I just want to see that guy continue to propel upwards. Um, that would be cool, actually. I think he might bring a different swag, you know, to, to Bullet Club, maybe, you know. A little freshness to the whole the idea because we we know the whole tenure with the with the faction, but um yeah I, I can see him now like in Bay PW that whole deal hashtag in Bay PW, but um yeah Bullet Club Impact I can, I mean I think that's just that concept just kind of shows like what's good about Impact right now is that they're very unpredictable. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, but they're also consistent with their stuff. They got the great talent. They got, you know, that quality, consistent booking, and they got the, you know, everything flowing right now. So, um, I'd absolutely be down for that. You know, that of all the people, I thought might show up um, to that to the end of that pay per view. Baby, <laughs> what did you call him? Uh, fetus uh, face. Fetus face. Well, not one of them. <laughs> Was not the guy I thought would would, would uh, pop up there. So, yeah, I mean, you know, just uh, just keep the surprises coming. They, I don't did they. That probably was the one thing they didn't tease, like because they teased everybody else with their like their sayings or their catchphrase or whatnot. But I didn't mm-hmm. get enough. Pop in the switchblade, which they shouldn't have, because that's not something you, you know, telegraph. 
Right. And, and well, they didn't t- tease Jay White and they didn't tease um, Thunder Rosa. Everyone else they teased. Mickey yeah. James with the, with the trash bag. Um, Scott DeMora with the whole, like, just dropping every one of Chelsea Green's nicknames. Uh, the constant use of no way. Uh, who else was there? I think there was one more. <clears throat> that's, all, that's also Paul and knowing that because they, they know those, they are talent, but they're not holy S moments at all. So. No. <laughs> and, and definitely I was hoping for a Brian Danielson appearance, but, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens going forward. Because hopefully we're not done getting guys in the company. But I will say this. The, the Impact did announce that they're doing Bound for Glory this year, uh, I, I think, in Las Vegas. Yeah, man. And I think they announced it was AAA, I want to say. And then New Japan and AEW were, were also advertised for appearing. So that's, that's dope. Which I guess makes sense, that, that AAA, because I think uh, Tauros is still a AAA. So. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, thumbs up. Uh, so, who would you want in uh, Impact Bullet Club or Bullet Packed, if you will? Bullet Packed. Hmm. Let's say I'm guessing it would be led by White, right? Or or Bay. You know, I, I guess we can just look at it from an Impact standard because Bay okay. was the one that was first tabbed. So you would imagine he'd be the head of the representation. Yeah, man. I can see Bay, Miguel. Um, I like Miguel. Yeah, Bay Miguel. Um, just for the, just for the sake of taking him away from a certain other person, I don't like to see. Uh, ba. <laughs> <laughs> I think Ba's too chill to be with the ball club. Although that's I mean almost, that'd be pretty dope. Yeah, that's almost why I would like to see it though. Like. <laughs> Uh, bullet club, but 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 bu- for life. But um, let's see. If, uh, yeah, Bay Miguel. I'm trying to see who else, cause I, I I don't know. No Austin. No Shira's with Zane, and Zane got his own swag. Uh, I don't even think that's something that Alexander would be up for. Um. Alicia, man. Hmm. Get her in the uh, the Maria. Oh no, Maria wasn't in Bullet Club. Who was? uh, Get her in the uh, the Peter uh, Bunny outfit. (laughs) Yeah, maybe that's also something maybe Hernandez could do, because he could be doing something more than getting beat up in in poker segments, and. I just want a storyline where freaking swingers just trying to constantly get in and being denied. <laughs> so I have two tra- tra- trajectories for my bullet pack. One would be Bay, um, Steve Macklin. He seems like the kind of guy who would have some issues with people and would want to hurt, hurt them for, for no real reason. <laughs> Former Steve Cutler. or Is his name Steve Macklin? I know his last name is Macklin. Yes, yeah, Macklin. Yes, yeah. So it'd be Bay Macklin, and then I would probably go with Eddie, because ah. he's got that Japanese tie. Or we rebrand a group, and we have Bay come in and rebrand Violent by Design as Bullet Club Impact, because Eric Young very much has that physical style. Joe Doring, former All Japan champion, Rhino physical style. Diener is trying to be portrayed as having that physical style, so. You have four guys who would be pretty much ready-made uh, Bullet Club members circa 2015 in Impact, but they have a different name, Violent by Design. So those would be my two paths. Bay, the leader of each grouping, but it, it would definitely be a, uh, an intriguing idea. Speaking of in- intriguing ideas, you know what's not one? Signing Velveteen Dream to show up for your indie show. There's a problem there. So it was announced today. And, like, this is just bad idea juju all around. Like, like if you were to sit down and concoct an idea of, of poor decisions from top to bottom, it would be the story. So a promotion called SWF Wrestling. I've never even heard of them. Uh, we're doing a return to Jersey Shore show called Home Sweet Home. And it was going to have the wrestler formerly known as Velveteen Dream showing up at the Ocean County YMCA. 
And the show, Marcus, was scheduled for September 11th. So, ominous. You, 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 you got a dude who's not exactly the most fan-favorite people. And you're doing it on a day that kind of carries a heavy connotation, so maybe you don't want to fuck around with it. I'm just saying. The announcement of Velveteen Dream being on this SWF show in Jersey lasted all of a few hours because it was announced on Twitter by SWF owner and founder Rob Fury. Quote, tonight we announced Velveteen Dream would be appearing at Home Sweet Home. I believe any man can be slandered and have been through other situations in my life unrelated but untrue. Okay, fair. You're going to go to bat for the guy. Not exactly the hell to die on, but, you know, your hell, your life, you get to pick. But then he follows up with this sentence from out of nowhere, like a Randy Orton handshake. Don't touch that hand. After careful consideration, Dream has been removed. <laughs> what? So he goes from, so, so literally, it's three sentences. Tonight we announced that Vel- Velveteen Dream would be appearing at our home sweet home event. I believe any man can be slandered and have been through other situations in my life unrelated but untrue. After careful consideration, Dream has been removed. Like, that is a, that is a hell of a, of, a, of a roller coaster just in, in three sentences, man. I don't think I've seen a story just come from out of nowhere like that. Marcus, we've talked about Velveteen Dream and, and, and the allegations against him, including, you know, uh, attemptive, uh, what, what are they called? Uh, attempted grooming of a minor. Uh, there, yeah. there, there was uh, the whole car theft situation and... and all kinds of weirdness. Do you think Velveteen Dream should kind of just walk away from wrestling, or, or, or do you think this dude kind of buckled under the, under the pressure? Because, like, I'm of the mindset that why would you why would you book him in the first place? Like, you know he's not someone that is going to exactly bring positive uh, attention to your brand, so why do it? But I want to hear your thoughts. Like, like, what's your thoughts on this whole situation? It's just interesting because it's it's like a tweet and delete, but booking. Mm-hmm. Um, because it's like you know, basically, you know, he booked the guy, defended the guy, and then it was like, the juice not worth the squeeze on this one. Like, I don't not even it's, a little. It's just weird. Yeah, it's it's just it's just weird. So you know. I think the guy deserves a second chance. I mean, yeah, eventually, but I just think with so many different things nowadays in the entertainment industry, like they just, you know, the backlash is just like, I mean, that's just what it is for a lot of people. Juice not worth the squeeze. But to your point, like you said, if you're, if you're the person that's always going to be rather be safe than sorry, then don't, don't try it. Mm-hmm. Cause you look even worse now that you, you know, you book the guy, you defending him. Like if you're going to bet on the horse, let him race. If you're going to go all in and let them race, but it's like if you're going to, because now, now you're also yo-yoing that guy, not just the audience on one end, you're also yo-yoing him. I'm pretty sure he could use the book and looking forward to getting the pay. I don't know how that works out or what have you. Clear, Chris, um, if you have- but yeah, just, you know, if you, if you don't want everything that come with it, don't, don't do it. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it just, it just stinks all around because, you know, that whole situation with Green felt like it came out of left field when he was already, I think, on a decline when he had came back, for I think, from an injury. And then that came out and kind of just completely derailed him for good when not maybe, what, a year before that, he was one of the most talked about things on the Internet, on around the industry, I guess. So his trajectory is just, you know, probably as weird as that story. So Yeah, and needless to say, there's a lot of quote t- tweets about this. Uh, they limited who can respond to the tweet. So, so they're being quote tweeted. Um, not all of them are loading for whatever reason. I don't know why. Uh, but he, here's some of the responses uh, from the tripping balls dem- uh, demographic. Quote, cackling from who's that girl? It's Jess. Booking him in the first place makes you a clown. From Tower of Babel. Great name. You fucking tried booking a pedophile. Hopefully no one wor- worth a shit works for you. Again, I, I, I need to specify this. Pedophile is only for prepubescent individuals. Yeah. Be accurate. And I'm not defending him. I, it's specifically to kind of showcase that there's a difference between trying to sleep with a 16-year-old and a 6-year-old. 
pedophiles are god awful people. I'm not saying Velveteen Dream is not a bad person. I'm just saying like there's degrees, levels to being bad. I would say uh, a scale from one to ten, Dream's on the four to five scale. Pedophiles are nine. So like you know, context, context, and 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 and. and I'm trying to think of the, of, the, of the damn word. It starts with a P. Perspective. There it is. <laughs> yeah, I figured it out. Uh, for man getting hit by a football, oh my God, we found out. Dirty delete. Shame. That's a great name, too. Uh, from Sean Taggart. Listen, quote. Sorry, this is, this is a quote. Listen, if you snowflakes didn't shit on us booking someone, I wouldn't have had to take it back and make this unapologetic post to seem like I'm woke. Unquote. He continues on by saying, get fucked. Uh, the crazy show show... Solid name. Probably can move to not book a guy who likes to message children sexually explicit things. But most people wouldn't know that, would have known that beforehand without people having to tell them. <laughs> From Harry, the difference between cancel culture and consequence culture is how much each side has to do to cause trouble. When you're the first company to hire and promote an appearance by a disgraced predator, you're doing all the work. Fair. And then finally from Drama Time, imagine being labeled a pedo and there has been zero police reports filed against you. Wrestling fans, more judgments like that than the court's. So apparently this individual thinks that um, Velveteen is re- being railroaded, and I don't necessarily agree. I don't necessarily disagree, but I don't necessarily agree. Yeah, it's, it's a weird, Greg, because going back to your earlier point, they are levels, but, it, it, you know, the narrative is it's all the same thing. Mm-hmm. You know, and they're all that, but, but if it was them, that, then we back to the levels conversation, which is it's always interesting to me. A lot of this stuff comes off as you know, real hypocritical because these people oftentimes give the energy on these social media platforms like they have intimate details that nobody else does. Mm-hmm. Like they know for a fact this is what it is just because they saw the same thing out of everybody else. Like you're a third party give it, trying to give first party energy. And it's, it, it doesn't, <laughs> it, it doesn't, but well, I get it, but it's, you know, it, it's more serious than that. It's just with the guy, it's like at this point, that's like us trying to champion Michael Elgin. You know you finna get this social work on uh, on social media. There's no other alternative. You know what comes with that, specifically for women. You know what's finna come with that. Yeah, it's not. It's, so, not, it's not good. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I personally hope that we, you know, we either get one direction or another. I I, I do believe that Velveteen's done some things. I, I, there's too much out there, you know, not to, but I don't know what, and and I don't want to jump on any uh, any bandwagons, but Velveteen's definitely done things that I would say is controversial and concerning, because until there's an investigation, and 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 anyone who knows me should should understand this by now. I'm very much a, a rule of law kind of guy. Like, I I like things being orderly. <laughs> It, it makes me sleep well at night. So investigations are always a big fun thing for me. Like, let's investigate the shit out of this. Even if there's not enough there to convict, at least there's enough there to paint a picture. And, and I don't know if we've ever gotten that. And truthfully, with the WWE, they wouldn't do it anyway. Like, we all know, like, there are so many firsthand accounts of what Randy Orton has done to people, right? There's no way that they could have investigated that and, and not have been like, oh, yeah, you're a pedophile. You're not, not a pedophile, but you're a predator. You know, Randy Orton's a, a, a actual sexual predator. When you walk around with your genitals out and you, and you you rub yourself and then shake people's hands, I don't know what else to call you. And there's enough people who, who have cl- uh, cl- uh, corroborated that story. And even Randy Orton himself has admitted to dropping his genitals on people without their consent. Like, I can pull up the fucking interview. <laughs> like, these, these aren't, like, new terms. Like, these aren't new jokes. So when it comes to Velveteen Dream, yeah, I, I fully 100% believe that these accusations are probably true. I just would yeah. like an, uh, an investigation to, you know, f- vol- uh, you know, cause some validity. I want to make sure that this shit doesn't, you know, keep happening. Because e- even, if, even if you believe it's true, well, he's, he's not under any investigation. He's not being arrested. He's not charged with anything. So if he is, in fact, a sexual predator, in, in which case people who do behave poorly or badly or negatively when it comes to the aspects of sex, they are, in fact, usually predators. Like, they have a certain desire that needs to be met, and, and if it's not being met, they're going to go out and find it. So if he's doing these things, or has done these things, then he'll keep doing them, because that, that's what he's transfixed on. So 
one way or another, we, we, we have to do something to validize, to cause validity within these accusations against Velveteen Dream because it's important. Like, like People need to realize that just because he's no longer the hot you know, new topic to talk about on Twitter doesn't mean that, that these stories have gone away. It's like the whole Elgin thing. Like He's clearly yeah, got some issues. Yeah, and it's also weird because I think for a lot of people, it's a lot of emotional projection because they were heavily invested in this guy's career as fans. Mm-hmm. Now they feel betrayed. So now it's like, I got to, I got to, you know, crap on any scenario this guy's involved with or, or what have you, or tell down anybody who tries to defend him, because I need to reconcile with the fact that I may have been supporting a a pedal this whole time mm-hmm. in that mind. You know, so a lot, of, a lot of it, I think, is guilt prediction, which is even worse, because they'll never come out and say that. But you're not going to have somebody also come out on, you know, as far removed as some of these fans are from the situation, and be like, probably shouldn't have tried to bet on the horse in the first place if you didn't like, you know, the horse races or whatever. It's always got to be like, oh, it's such and such for the pedal. Like, they literally give the energy like they were the victim, which I think causes a lot of unnecessary necessary things when you don't have the proper details of what you need, but we're not really in the, the era for people to have the details. They kind of just need to spark mm-hmm. the flame. Like, oh, spark. Oh, it's about to blow. It's about to blow. So, yeah, it's 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 bad, man. Like you said, this is a one big pendulum swing, and hopefully we get back to some regularity, but right now, we everybody just want to get any perceived bad guys out of the bucket, and I get it, but it's a lot of bad guys that's <laughs> And the same thing with you waving the torch because they just got their hoods on now. Like, oh, they ain't caught me yet. Let me, you know. And and that's honestly like, that's something that that I always think about. Like, how many individuals kind of hide behind that altruism, good guy status? Like, who who was yeah. it? Uh, um, David Starr. He was all about like, we need to unionize. We need to, you know, not be bullied. And oh, it turns out that David Starr may have done something that he shouldn't have done. Uh-oh, David Starr, and never, I've never heard from him ever again, which is actually a good thing. So it's kind of one of those things, like, when it comes to anyone, regardless of who they are, investigations are always great because they give us answers. We need answers. It doesn't matter if you believe or, or disbelieve it, it. We need to investigate. And we have seen individuals kind of get thrown on, under the bus and, maybe falsely accused or maybe accused of doing something that was different than how they interpret it. Because it's very easy to say, like, hey, uh, you look very nice today. I, 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 think, I think you look very attractive today. I, I just want to say that. You think you're giving a compliment, but they think you're, you're sexually harassing them. So there's always, yeah. there's, and, and I've seen that so often. And, and it's not even just, like, with, with, with men to women or women to men or, or sexual aspects. Like, how many times have we seen a woman... Or, or a person scream about, like, oh, so-and-so stole my phone. I don't know. That seems like pretty big energy right there. You sure yeah. about that? Chad, you stole my phone. So that's, this, is, this is your phone in my hand. Okay. Get another phone. Call it if it doesn't light up. Not your phone, dumbass. Right? Like, it's very simple to solve some of these situations. But it's one of those things, like, like I think what we're seeing isn't just so much a... It's not so much a symptom of, of like, uh, the Me Too movement or, or what was the, uh, the wrestling version of it? The uh, calling out. The f- speaking out? Is that, was that oh, speaking yeah. out? Yeah. I, I don't even think that's necessarily, like, the speaking out movement. I think in general in society we're looking to villainize anyone that we think is another. And it doesn't matter if it's race, religion, sex, gender, orientation. It doesn't matter. Like, I, I think people are just trying to find people to hate. And I don't get it. That doesn't mean that some people don't deserve it. doesn't mean that some people shouldn't be held responsible for their actions because they absolutely should. I'm just saying yeah. that so many people are looking to be that person. Like, I took someone down. That they're willing to kind of, like, right on into it without even looking at the, uh, the situation as a whole. Yeah, it's, this it's, isn't about it's, Velveteen Dream specifically. I don't want anyone thinking that I'm defending the guy because I'm not. No, I'm just no. saying, like, the general culture is, is, is definitely something that needs to be kind of eyed at the moment. We talk about this all the time. When, you know, the smoke there's fire and... Mm-hmm. and, and Example, going back to what you were just talking about earlier, we don't like the guy, but just because we didn't like the guy and he had some douchey moments of wrestling on me, we, you know, we didn't thoroughly give an unbiased thing. The perfect example of that is Enzo. Mm-hmm. He was everybody's number one thing, and we went through that whole uh, situation where the person that was next to the person was like, she's she's lying, she's lying, she wants attention, she has, 
you know, mental stuff, and you haven't heard anything about that since. Because I think that person just lost a lot of ground to stand on, and like I said, even though he soured a lot of people in wrestling, that don't necessarily mean that he was some type of, you know, predator or whatever he was being made out to be from a criminal standpoint. Um, and certainly not anything that, you know, being piled on by guys like um, the freaking other dude from the VOD villains that was just going around and trashing him for trash and sake. So, but he's a good example of that. A lot of people, it was very convenient for a lot of people to call him a lot of things that he wasn't, even though they didn't have any proof. And then when somebody that was close to alleged victim came out with proof that they were lying, everybody was like, oh, well, next victim. It, it's it's a weird thing that people only glom on the stories when it fits a narrative. Uh-huh. You know, and it's sad. I don't know if you heard about this, but there's a, a black woman out in England who was shot. Did you, did you hear about this? No. She was a, a BLM, BLM activist, and she was shot. And, and everyone first reported, oh, yeah, some white dude shot her. And it was all over the news, and it was, oh, my God. But then it was revealed that it was, I think, four or five uh, black guys who were in a gang who shot her because they didn't like the fact that she was kind of making it harder for them to do their thing, apparently. And then as soon as it was real, like, who's the suspects? All of a sudden, no one started, you know, no one talked about it. Yeah. Because it no longer fit a narrative. And I'm sitting here like, All right, granted, this woman isn't exactly a great person because she's like, we should enslave white people. And I'm like, well, <laughs> but that doesn't mean she should be shot. And the police are investigating and they're trying to find out all the details. But like the news is all of a sudden shut the fuck up because it no longer fits a narrative. So it's kind of one of those things like I, I wish people wouldn't just talk about things that need to be talked about because it fits a narrative. You know, like if it's bad, talk about it. Like, like, don't just don't just shut up about it when it's over. Like, if it's still ongoing, it still needs to be discussed. Like, but that's the kind of culture we live in. We live in a culture where it's like everything's thirty second sound bites. Then it's on to the next travesty, on to the next uh, story, on to the next uh, uh, controversy, or if you're British, controversy. Yeah. <laughs> like like with this Frito Lay's uh, strike thing, big story this week. By August, second week of August, I doubt anyone's going to be talking about it, even if it's still ongoing. Because that's just, that's, that's the nature of 24-7 uh, news cycles. It's not, about, it's not about news, it's about ratings. It doesn't matter if something is still trendy or, or, or worth talking about. It doesn't make money. It doesn't make money, we're not going to talk about it. Casey Anthony maybe kills her child. She's an attractive white woman. Of course we're going to make that news for two months because sex sells. But anything going on with, with natural disasters or, or, or political intrigue, no, no, no. Get God satiate the tabloids. So do better, people. Y'all need to do better. Especially Velveteen Dream. <laughs> <laughs> he needs to do the most best. Uh, so by the by, technically, if we're, if we're going by Greek terminology, an epiphilia is someone that is attracted to people between the ages of 15 and 19 which is technically what Velveteen Dream would be. Because if I remember correctly, the person he was sexting or photographing or whatever was like 16 or 17. So Still illegal. <laughs> Still illegal. It's but. So, so weird that I saw so many different things are being defined now, even like the worst of situations, just because people want to put it in context. Like you'll have a 40-year-old legitimately arguing like, like I don't do kids. Like I'm a 15. To like, it's, it's like, dude, it's not, that doesn't make it. <laughs> It sounds better on paper. Okay, whatever. <laughs> whatever. You're 40 trying to date a, 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 a 15-year-old. Okay. Oh, no, that's illegal. That's still illegal. <laughs> just, exactly. just because you're an, an epiphilia and not a pedophilia. Did, did, or epiphilio? Pedophile? Epiphilia? What the, how the hell do you? I don't know. <laughs> File. No, no, uh, epophile. Oh, there it is. They, can, they don't have licenses. They can drive, though. They just don't have licenses. Okay. All uh, right. They have the license that go the different direction. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's not good. I don't know why people are, are you know, like, don't date a, t- a 15-year-old. Don't date a 17-year-old. If you're, if I'm 34, god damn it. <laughs> Hate that. I'm not trying to date a 20-year-old. I know it's legal, but what the hell are we going to talk about? She's going to want to vape and just talk about some dumb TikTok bullshit. And I'm going to be so bored. I'm going to be looking at, at my nail clippers going, I mean, I could probably cut through my wrist with those. <laughs> just like she's going to vape and screw and tweet. And not necessarily in that order. Maybe while we're screwing, she's going to want to tweet. And I'm going to like, Ugh. 
And you know, if she's 20, in today's day and age of sex positivity, she's not just screwing me, so she's putting me at risk for STDs. So, like, no thank you. No thank you. Uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm hardcore good. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> I think my cutoff might be, like, 28 now. Yeah, it's, it's, it's weird, man. Like, we way past, like, even now 21 is like, no, that's like, 17 to me no no <laughs> dude 21 is like 12 to me like no you're you're still too young and stupid no i i can't i can't so what's the old rule of thumb it's, it's your age divided by two plus seven something like that well if that's the case my my cutoff age is 24 which i'm like no i don't need anyone who still thinks partying and getting drunk and blacked out and doing drugs is a good time I don't need that kind of energy in my life. N- now or even back when I was 24. Like, no thank you. No thank you. Yeah. Like, listen, I'd love to relive t- 2010 all over again. Like, that was a good year for me. But, like, I, I-, I don't want to date someone who's still living that year. <laughs> yeah, because it's like, okay, 25 and up maybe. But, like, 25, like, she got to, like, you clearly got to be an old lady ch- clap trapped in this, like, Right, like, I want you to have raised your little sister or brother since when you were 12. You know, you've had three jobs, and they all lasted 10 years, and and, and you have a 401k that outdoes mine, which, to be fair, isn't hard. But, like, that's what I want. I want someone who's like, nah, I don't need this bullshit. Like, I'm 25. I'm so old. Like, yes. Friday nights in bed by 11, I love you. (laughs) Like, like legitimately on the level of you're 25, and, like, if I tried to buy you... Any type of expensive jewelry, you'd be like, why the freak did you give me this? You could have put this on, like, you know, towards a mortgage or towards something like that that's so long-term sustainable. I'm like, oh, she has potential. She does have potential. Vince McMahon Googling, how to tell if I've become a Judas in Judas in my mind? <laughs> huh. like, did you watch any of the Dark Side of the Rings this year? Mm. It's cheap. It's all you. It's all you. (laughs) Quote from Vince McMahon Googling, is Daniel Bryan still mad that I wouldn't let him wrestle after getting concussed even though I let all the other uh, concussed people still wrestle? Like I put his wife in the Hall of Fame, what more does he want? (laughs) Has CM Punk signed with the AWA? (laughs) Uh, WD Trademarks complaining is not conversation. Uh, Google, uh, Vince McMahon Googling, how to get those Twitter marks to shut the fuck up? (laughs) How the fuck over NXT? Is that guy from Fast 9? <laughs> How do these fans escape my Thunderdome streams? <laughs> what the hell have you been? Uh, was it a bad idea to, to not sleep for 70 years? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, uh, okay. So, so the where the hell have you been was from SmackDown. So B, uh, Bleacher Report Wrestling tweeted out the, uh, the, the clip of him walking out going, where the hell have you been? Vincent yeah. Man Googling, quote, symptoms of dementia. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Just, 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 just fucking go- going off on everyone. I love it. I love it. All right. So with that said, let's see. We're going to talk about Money in the Bank because Velveteen Dream depresses me. All that potential thrown away because he likes children. Or breaking in the cars or stealing cars or filing false reports. I don't remember what it is. Like, there's so many of them. All I know is if Vince, if Vince fires you and Triple H doesn't fight for you, you must have done something stupid. Yeah, man. Dream. Couldn't stay away from the teens. Stay away from the teens. As, as uh, Stephen A. Smith will more than likely say, stay off the teens! <laughs> <laughs> the weed! <laughs> that dude, yeah. Speaking of the weed, no, you weren't saying things at Money in the Bank. Big match, John is back. Before we get there, we gotta get through all the other shit. <laughs> I watched this show. Don't know why. <laughs> Uh, I'm good. Uh, the Usos defeated the Mysterios to win the titles because apparently if you get a DUI for the fourth time in your life, third time in your life, fourth time, uh, we don't send you to rehab. We give you championship gold because reasons. 
is it I is it Nikki Ash or Nikki A S H? It's Nikki Ash. Uh, so, so dumb. Almost a superhero. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, <laughs> going back to the other thing real quick. Apparently, he apparently Vince likes consistency, and no matter what form it takes. That's yeah. fair. Could explain why Randy Orton sells a job, even though he's a giant piece of crap. That's fair. Uh, Nikki Ash defeated Alexa Bliss, Asuka, Liv Morgan, Naomi, Ta- uh, Tatiana. God damn it. <laughs> I saw an Italian Tamina and just right into one another. And Zelina Vega for the Money in the Bank match. And Nikki Ash cashed it in the next night on Raw because Charlotte defeated Rhea Ripley by submission and then lost it to Nikki Cross, who's now Nikki Ash. And she's almost a superhero, and it doesn't make any fucking sense because fuck this writing, apparently, I guess. I don't know. This show is terrible. Yeah, I mean, look, I commend her because apparently she came up with that gimmick, pitched it, and got it, and, and, and has succeeded with it for no other reason. I think the old man's entertained, which will keep you on TV far longer than actually being talented. That's, that's uh, fair. But I got to give it to her because she, she saw the writing on the walls. Like, I, whatever was working on NXT won't work up here, and I got to switch it up, and I got to do something no matter how outlandish and commit to it and stick with it. And that's the sad part is... That's how you survive and thrive on the main roster. And no lies were told. Yeah. AJ and Omos defeated the Viking Raiders. Omos moves about as well as um, Shaq now on a basketball court. Just, just very lumbering. A lot of people on Twitter seem to like him, though, Marcus. Are you, are you a fan of the Omos? Are you almost a fan of the Omos? Yeah, I mean, I, I do, I do like the guy. I think he has um, some Kali isms about himself. He's um, a, lot, a lot of Kali isms. <laughs> Kali isms, and he could, you, he could definitely try and sell more. But this is yet another example of even if you give Styles, <laughs> Mister Community, uh, <laughs> even if Styles, no matter, even at his age, um, a broomstick, he'll take it to the dance, and be like, "Wow, those two can really." vibe well together. No, it's just mostly styles. And that's kind of what it is here. And and, and not to take away from almost the strength of his, his his sheer mass or whatever, but a lot of it is styles. But I think, you know, not for nothing, this is this is yet another example of, of why that guy's like just he's one of the kings of being like a multi tool player. There's not many scenarios you, you that you can't put him in and he won't, you know, rise to the occasion. So I mean that's probably one of the better matches on the card too. You know, Styles might be older than most communities, or at least parades. Ah. But I will say he can still go. I think he's like, what, 45? 44? Yeah, just turn 44. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, the Viking Raiders are fantastic, but they're never going to get the, the push they deserve because Vince doesn't know what to do with them. Because he's Vince. I don't have as much faith in, faith in Omos as you do. He is seven foot three, and that's impressive. But if you ever watched him play basketball, you know that he's not exactly an athlete. You can teach someone how to be talented, but you can't teach height. And I think that's why Omos is on the main roster after only being in wrestling for what two years. And, and think about that: you have guys in NXT who have been wrestling for fifteen years, stuck. In the developmental brand. And yeah, I don't care what Johnny Gargano says. It's a development, de- developmental brand. It's the brand where if you don't have a personality, you end up. Because think about all the guys on that brand. Karrion Cross, oh, he's scary. Johnny Gargano, oh, he's tiny and wears comic stuff. Adam Cole does the baby. They're all one note, no charisma dudes. But almost, he's been in wrestling for two years. He's tagging with AJ Styles because that's life. Speaking of that, that's life. Kofi Kingston, everyone's all excited. Oh, Kofi's getting the title back. It was adorable that you thought so. <laughs> so Bobby defeats Kofi Kingston by a technical submission. So that means I didn't watch this match. Uh, I, I, I had something else I had to do. Uh, details are not required, but let's just say that uh, it was unavoidable. I have to imagine by the term technical submission that Kofi passed out from some type of choke and or submission hold. 
Yeah, before the match, but Lashley went and, uh, regained his impact spirit. Ooh. <laughs> Kofi didn't see it coming. And, uh, yeah, I'm, all I'm going to say is, if you need to know, it's, it lasted longer than a match with Lashley, but it was <laughs> only mean he just got his ass whooped a little longer. So that's basically what it was. He, he you know, took took three dominators. Oof. Uh, back to back, to back, and uh, then just you know succumb to the uh, the full Nelson. So, ah, full man. Nelson. Yeah. yeah so uh, then Charlotte Flair defeated Ray Ripley. That made a lot of people sad. They're really trying to get her to sixteen fast. That that is definitely a thing they are trying to do. I don't want anyone to even doubt that. If we're counting NXT, she's had two, three. She had two with the NXT title, one with the Divas Championship, five with the Raw title, five with the SmackDown title. She's already at 13, Marcus. That is fucking shit, man. You can't remember not one damn one of them. Nope. Um, her entire character narrative is being champion. Doesn't matter how it happens. Certainly doesn't matter why it happens. It's that she just has to be champion. That's her entire character narrative. We have whole other descriptions, moments, and, and you know, arcs. But all the other three horse women, her, she's just champion. That's it. That's the narrative. Deal with it. She's Flair's daughter, <laughs> and she's the queen or whatever the crap, and she has to be champion. I think that's kind of fucked. And, and, and the thing that really kind of aggravates me is she's like, well, I, I don't want to be compared to my father, but everything she does is, is her father's. It's, it's, it's kind of yeah. fucked, man. What's even worse than that, because when you see what happened on Raw, it's like, y'all really just did that. Again, like I always do, like y'all did with the whole Brock thing. It's like, oh no, he was the youngest. No, no, we we, we fell out with Brock. Make uh, uh make the the the, the, Randy Orton. the yeah, make. And then y'all y'all did that same thing with, with other people and 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 the stuff. Y'all just wanted to get her to a number. Like Flash number isn't even real. <laughs> again, another narrative. Yeah. Like, so it's 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 ridiculous. But again, you know. That's that's the whole thing. So let's let's look at this real fast. Charlotte won the Raw Women's title. Yeah, the Raw yeah. Women's title at WrestleMania 32. Yeah, held it for 113 days. Her second reign was for 43 days. Her third reign was for 29 days. Her fourth reign was for 57 days. Her fifth reign was for one day. That's the Raw title. So what are we at? 113, Mark? Is that the benchmark? 113. So, 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 so just keep that in mind. Uh, then we have the SmackDown title. 147 days. New benchmark. She won that on SmackDown. Lost it on SmackDown to Carmella. So, you know, that was good. Her second reign was 28 days. Her third reign was 12 days. Her fourth reign was less than a day. Her fifth reign was five days. She has held the belt on SmackDown for 101 days while holding the Raw belt for 243 days. Marcus, I'm not very good at math, but 101. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, this is, so 193 days. I was looking at Bianca Belair's 101 because she, it was the one highlighted. So she's held the SmackDown belt for 193 days and the Raw belt for 243 days. I'm pretty sure that's not even a year. Uh, two years, I mean. So let's see, 193, let's see, nope, that, that's the wrong number, nope, that, what am I doing, come on, and 193, yeah, it's 436 days, uh, where is she at, where, where's, where's Becky Lynch, Becky Lynch has held the belt uh, on Raw for once, and held it for 398 recognized days, that's just one belt on one, on one brand, is about 40, about th- 38 odd days <laughs> off of Charlotte's combined 10 reigns. Yikes. So Smack, uh, SmackDown Raw, she had a 258-day reign with NXT. But again, that's developmental, so that doesn't count. And yeah. then she held it for 63 days, I guess? Yeah, the second time. The second time. Ruined uh, Ripley Ripper, the first. Yeah. yeah, she was also the last Divas champion. Um. And now that you're going through that, I think the last two Money in the Bank winners have now cashed in on her because that's how Miller got it off her. Yep. 196 days for the Divas title. 
Yeah. Like I said, we we not the mathematicians here. All I know is anytime somebody bragging on, well, she got 13 titles? Yep. That means you lost it 12 times. Well, she's lost it 13 times now. She just lost it again. Thank you. Yes. Quick math. Lost it 13 times. So, boom. That That's that's really the record. But, again, we talk about this all the time. It's like I'd rather have one rain last damn near 400 days than all of what you just went through. That doesn't make you good. That just makes Oh, my God. Oh. Yeah, it, it's, it's not a good thing. In MMA, it depends on where you go, but each title defense counts as another world title victory. If that was the case, that'd be one thing. But in the UFC, I don't think they do that. But in Bellator, they do. In one championship, they do. In Ryzen, they do. But that's not how they do it in pro wrestling. So, like... If you only have a, a reign for 28 days, it means you fucking lost the belt like that. In MMA, it's, it's a little bit different because usually you get three or four, maybe five or six defenses in if you're good, like if you're really good. But a lot of times you lose in the first two. So like, it's, it's different. And I, I don't think people really realize how bad it looks when you're dropping the belt every other day, especially when, it, when, when, when you spent a decade shitting on WCW for doing the same thing and all your, you know, Rise and falls of WCWs, your your Monday Night Wars, and all that. Uh, they were hot shot in the belt. They didn't respect the belt, and here you are doing the same thing. It's like, uh, uh, <laughs> what, what, like what are you guys doing? What, what, what are you guys doing? On some not so terribleness, uh, Big E won the Money in the Bank match. Oh man, that was the biggest highlight of the night. The match far superseded, and not to take away because. You know, we equal opportunities here, both when we cheering people and both when we booing them. Mm-hmm. But that, that latest match never had to stand a chance. And I'm glad Nikki won because um, I feel like, they, you know, it's not like they would go give it to Liv just because that was the way people wanted it to go. And and, and I would imagine in some form or fashion they'd be petty and punish Naomi for the so crap, even though that has nothing to do with her mm-hmm. um, directly anyway. Um so I had no problem with Nikki winning, but the way that they, everybody in that match by the end of it just came out looking completely stupid. But the men's man, I mean, it was it was some good stuff. I think you, <laughs> one of Chad's favorite wrestlers, Kevin Owens, took a lot of the beating uh, because uh, he's a uh, thicker. Mm-hmm. But uh, it was just a, it was a it was a better match, and even <laughs> freaking John even got a good. <laughs> Freaking curb stomp in on Riddle, who apparently they squashed whatever that was. I mean, I think Riddle, they went up to him backstage, told, like, the cameras, like, I don't want y'all catching this. I want to do this legitimately. And told him, like, look, man, I don't agree with nothing my wife said. That was some crap. I don't got no beef with you. I think you're amazing. I would love to, to work with you again. And, you know, congratulations on the wife and the, and the baby and all that. And, you know, I think you probably caught, you know, Seth all guard, but. Yeah, I mean, it was just it was a far better match, and they definitely got the right winner. You know, I just hope they tied all in properly because if you go have something going down with everything that's been going down with little, what Lashley in a new day, because he can either cash in on what Roman or uh, Lashley, Lashley was it? Brand- no, you're right. Okay, so uh, yeah, hopefully they go, they go that route, and uh, yeah, it was just, it was just good to see, man. It was just specifically after he had to drop that IC strap to. Apollo, and then about to start something with, uh, I was finna call him Damian Priest, but I'm thinking about Tommy End, and then we already, we already know what happened there, so. Yeah. Alistair Black. Alistair Black. So, I was kind of hoping that they would finally do something with Nakamura. Yeah. Nope. Ricochet, I don't know if he debuted New Trunks, but this is the first time I've seen New Trunks. I didn't hate him. Kind of dug him. Yeah, man. Everybody was like, push, push Ricochet. Did you see what he did? I'm like, technically, he didn't do anything he doesn't normally not do already. But I think, you know, people just, you know, they felt like they had to be reminded of all his spectacularness. But they, let's be honest, they did the same thing years ago when Kofi was doing a bunch of stuff. And even years ago when it was Shelton's match. Mm-hmm. You know, so I just think that's that money in the bank energy that, that comes along every year. I will say this. Apparently, there are some issues with the Peacock uh, broadcast. I have Peacock. I did not have that issue. 
So. Oh wow, that's good. So, so. Just kind of how it is. Maybe, maybe they're like, hey, you're just signing up for the pay-per-view? Fuck you. <laughs> and they look at me like, hey, you've been a subscriber since we launched. You like your modern family. We're going to make sure your stream works perfectly. And I was like, sweet. I'm going to watch Psych now. And they're like, wait, this show's not over. I'm like, it is for me, motherfucker. All right, I guess. So then we go into the main event, Reigns versus Edge. I was like, all right, maybe they'll finally give Edge the win because he's 48. He's got a terrible fucking neck. He can't do this forever. Like, so, like, are you, are you ever going to put the belt on him? Ever? I don't know. Seems like the right place, right time. I think they're trying to do Reigns to go... Uh, f- he won it at Payback. I think they're trying to have him go from Payback of 2020 all the way to WrestleMania 2022. Or maybe even beyond. That would be my thought. Um, personally, I, I'm of the mindset that I think Edge should definitely get a run with the belt just once because it's 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 the same argument that I have with people who watch pro sports. Everyone's like, oh, you gotta, you gotta, it's all about winning. No, it's all about making money. It's it's a business, and people are gonna you know back popular names and, and they're gonna sign up to see popular names and and that's what they want to do. And if you have a problem with that, then be mad at the people who haven't built better names like. It's not the WWE's fault that you don't give a shit about half their fucking roster. I mean, technically it is. But, like, if you want guys to succeed, we've seen that the WWE will back them if you support them. Fandango only got over as much as he did because fans got behind him. Same thing with Brian Danielson. So if you if you like someone, get behind them and, and they, they'll rise up the card. But if all you're ever going to do is cheer for Edge, then, yeah, Edge is going to be featured quite a bit. I will say this. I love how everyone on the internet hates Goldberg. Like, they're all like, oh, it's Goldberg. But then he shows up to beat up Bobby Lashley, and everyone's like, oh, my God, it's Goldberg. And it's like, mm-hmm. I see all of you. I see all of you. Ugh, Goldberg sucks. And then his music hits, and you're all like, Goldberg. I see all of you. I ain't going <laughs> to sit here and pretend. I love Goldberg. I want him to did. beat Lashley. And then Reigns. And then Vince. And then God. More Goldberg. <laughs> And, then, and this is and this is a long time consistent impact fan like me and Chad. Chad's gonna be in the audience. Everybody's booing him with a sign that said "Never a Doubt" next to the girl with the curly hair that was gold from those impact tapers a while back. That was always oh, that 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 black Puerto Rican looking girl. Oh yeah. Uh huh. Oh, I'm, I'm gonna have me a married married me sign too. <laughs> Never a doubt. Marry me. Ah. <laughs> uh, she, I, she's, she's, oh, I miss her. That's the one thing I miss about the Orlando set. <laughs> the Man, only thing. I really, I, there's a part of me that really wants them to return to uh, Orlando. I, they, they shot in the same studios that used to like host all the Nickelodeon shows, like yeah. uh, Wild and Crazy Kids and, and uh, the, the uh, Guts. Cuts. So like that 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 shit's cool. I I fucking love that. Um, so I would love to see them go, go back and really utilize that entire like structure. I actually saw a video online of a dude who uh, snuck into the old Nickelodeon studios. I'm like, this is the dopest shit I've ever seen. Like they were like walking around like the facility that used to host like all like the the meetings and all that shit. I'm like, oh, that's cool as hell. I don't even care that there's nothing in there. It's just it's oh, I loved it. It's so cool. I'm going to find that video. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Goldberg fan for life. Yeah, man. I mean, to your, I mean, yeah, but to your point, I mean, that's kind of how I go. That's why he's back. Yeah. You know, they don't care about the young stars. They got to bring him in who, you know, getting blown up on his interests or not. You know, that's who they're going to keep bringing back. And then somebody like Edge, who may be in the best shape of his career, perhaps, and, and you know, has a whole new revived and revamped thing. And like you said, he has one of the best stories in wrestling, so you know that's really the only person that can can really box with Reigns right now. And, and thankfully, luckily, they had him in the interim because I don't know what's going to be going on with the Rock scenario. Um, but then also they 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 pulled in yet another forty some year old man now to go against him in Cena. Yeah. So you know that's just how it's going to be. That's just how it's going to be for a while. And I don't have a problem with that. Yeah. 
Because a lot of these cats, they don't have the charisma needed to get over in the first place. And I know we talk about it all the time at nauseum with the idea of, well, is it that they don't have the charisma or they don't have the opportunity? I'm looking at Macklin and Impact. He's, he's, he's fine. But he's never going to be a star. I don't think Macklin's ever going to be a star. So if this, is, if this is his final form, then WWE was right never to push him. But when you look at someone like Elias, like, all right, maybe you can make that argument, but he's been so bastardized that it really doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. So I, on one hand, I, I think it's, a lot of it has to do with the fans and the fact that they will always pop for the nostalgia acts. But on the other hand, I also acknowledge that you know, you can't get noticed if you're not being put in, in, in the window, right? Like, how, how are you supposed to draw in viewers if you're not being featured? But then again, they also need to start featuring the right guys. Like, listen, I love Apollo Crews. But I know he's about as charismatic as a rock. He has as much charisma as a, as, as a sea urchin. You know, <laughs> he's about as entertaining as tinfoil still on the wrap. And that's with the new gimmick? That's with the new gimmick. His, he is the raisin bran. No, he is the wheat bran of cookies. We, we know that he's lacking. So like, the only way you can really get him over is if you artif- artificially juice him. You know, you, you do the, like, the, the, the road warrior, ultimate ro- uh, warrior kind of gimmick idea. Paint his face up, vibrant colors, comes out, t- two minute squash matches. Because like Ryback, he, he, same, same issue with Ryback, right? Like Ryback's not entertaining. He's, yeah. he's the fat you cut off of beef. Like, that's what he is. He's, he's whatever. But you put him in a position where he can highlight what he does well. Yeah. He, he gets over. Yeah. And I think that's the same thing with Apollo Crews. Like, he's not being put in the situations where he's, where he's able to showcase his power and, and athleticism and his agility. So he comes off as very bland. And, and I don't think you can goose him anymore. Like, I, you know, you can't put him on a promo, give him all the goofy accents you want. But at the end of the day... He, he's not very entertaining. He's not very interesting. And some of it has to do with the facade. Some of it has to do with the name. Some of it has to do with, with just presentation. But a lot of it has to do with the fact that that's not his shtick. It's like bringing in Nakamura and going, well, you speak fluent Japanese. You speak broken English. We're going to have you speak Nigerian for no reason. And Nakamura's just going, why? I, what? Why? And I feel like that's what they're doing with, with Apollo Crews, where, where they're trying to make him into something he's not. And I feel like yeah. that also hinders talents, but I also feel like talents need to find ways of getting themselves over when they're forced in that situation. So they're like, yeah. it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a cacophony of stupidity <laughs> bashing off one another. What's that? I think we both said cacophony. Ah! Uh, that's what the freak it is, but it, it's all of what you said. It's the, the nostalgia act love by both a lot of fans and the company. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, not really seeing what you have and putting them in a position to do that. It's a lot of people not, you know, kind of biting a bullet like I think Nikki did. I was like, look, man, I got to do something, you know, and, and putting yourself in that in that wacky position to ultimately get over if you commit to it, um, no matter how wacky or zany it is. But also, you can end up like a Ziggler mm-hmm. when the company just ran him into the ground. The man has no credibility left. Mm-hmm. Like he's standing next to Rude, who by no means is is lost all gloriousness, but even he has more attraction than Ziggler. Because I mean, they did what they did to Ziggler was criminal, but again, and we talked about this, he keeps coming back for the abuse. Yeah, you know, you, so. you're one hundred percent correct. I I think I think one of the big issues is that the talent themselves, I don't think, are as talented as a lot of fans think. Because if you're the WWE and your goal is to make money. Why would you pay Edge a million dollars a year? Or why would you pay The Rock $10 million a year? Why would you pay Brock Lesnar $3.5 million or whatever it is? And keep bringing these guys back when you have the talent to just go and build them up. I think that's one issue. I think the other issue is I, I, Vince McMahon doesn't know how to book. He still books like it's 1981. You know, we, we get the same rematches every week on Raw. We get the same confrontations every week on Raw. It's like the idea of actually doing this as a sport with dramatic storylines interwoven into it is like such a novel concept that he doesn't realize it anymore. So you, you get, you get a lot of guys burnt out because they're always wrestling. They're always on TV and there's no hype. Like imagine the UFC, like imagine if Conor McGregor fought every weekend 
he wouldn't have the same hype around him. We've seen it. So you got to find ways of, of stagnating and, and, and staggering, not stagnating, but staggering wrestling appearances, matches. Honestly, wrestlers should only wrestle maybe once a month on free TV. I'm not saying appear only once. I'm saying wrestle only once. Like It should be a, a thing to tune in for instead of something that's expected. That mindset difference is what's ha- causing the most harm, in, not just WWE, but in a lot of wrestling. That's one of the reasons why I think Impact does well because they don't have all their guys wrestling on one show. They only have three or four matches a, a week. So you're not going to see Eddie every week. You're not going to see Sammy every week. So that, that's helpful. Um, but they need to do a better job themselves, but neither here nor there. So Reigns defeats Edge. Kind of expected it. Uh, then Cena comes out, and it was pretty dope. I won't lie. And they stare down. Cena has a new haircut. I'm not sure if he's trying to hide his bald spot. If he has a bald spot, he might not. I don't know. But the way his hair is combed back makes me think that he might. If he does, it'll break my heart. <laughs> John Cena bald. I don't know how I can handle that. <laughs> no, not at Oh, God, no. Like, he's got such a, like, uh, he's got that, that, that uh, Beethoven, the dog, uh, what was that, St. Bernard? He's got that St. Bernard phase where his cheeks are sunken in. If he doesn't have hair, man, that, that, that's a rough 45-year-old. It's, it's, it's interesting because now he got this, this like, high-power attorney hair. Mm-hmm. But he doesn't have the, the mask that he used to, so it looks kind of like, because he's, he's slimmed down, but he's still, like, heavily in shape. It's, it's a weird... So weird. Look, but people also got to remember uh, that he's getting older. Like mm-hmm. he's close to he is thirty. So uh, he's forty four. Yeah. So it's it's uh, it's interesting, but uh, you know, you probably still definitely got that strength. So, well, here's hoping. I doubt they're gonna have Cena go over on him. Uh, Cena's at what fifteen title reigns. I want to say, did he say did he say sixteen or seventeen? He was going for sixteen or seventeen. I don't know, but it's seventeen is the record. Yeah, I think whatever it is, it's, it's go. Uh, if you get it, it's a, go surpass Flash record. Yes. So, so let's see. He has thirteen WWE championships and three World Heavyweight titles. So he's got sixteen total. So he needs one more to break the record. I don't see them giving it to uh, to Cena anytime soon. So. Especially not not over Reigns. Not if they're building up to The Rock. That'll be funny. I wouldn't be surprised if they do Rock and Cena versus the, the family. I don't know who you who else you'd put in that for, for, for like a Survivor Series match, which I, I think is what they would end up doing. But, yeah. but like, I could see that. Like, having um, Cena and Rock and, I don't know, Seth Rollins, maybe. I don't know. Versus Roman and the Usos. I could see that. Speaking speaking of who, that's why Edge isn't champion right now because of yeah. Like I sent you sent you that clip of him just being in the middle of the hallway laughing. I'm like, is this not the scariest thing? <laughs> that that's that is literally how I, how I worry about my night. Like I, I just I worry about randomly waking up one day to someone going yeah. <laughs> like no, thank you. No, like it's, no, it's, no, thank you. It's that bat and it's that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, I don't. Uh, what's this Faye Jackson trial? Have you heard of this? Faye Jackson. Oh, what is that? I don't know. I, I just saw a tweet from Power Bomb Jitsu. Impact AEW, GCW, WWE, New Japan. Everyone is listening to the trial of Faye Jackson. Not since OJ Simpson has the world been glued to such a spectacle of a court trial. I've, I've never heard of it. Okay. No legal. It's, it's a thing. Apparently. I'm no, I'm no legal scholar, but I believe Faye Jackson fulfilled her obligation. Take as precedent the 1986 CeeLo silo stereo debacle. They ran ads advertising stereos for 299 million. Okay, this is Ian Riccoboni, so I'm like, I can't take this at face value. <laughs> so I just, I, all right. So I just saw something from Sugar Dunkerton. Wednesday night, 11 p.m., Twitter Spaces, hosted by Smiley Babibo. I think I said that right. 
the trial of Faye Jackson 419, we go into trial with uh, Swole as the defender, Shug as the prosecutor, Tasha Steeles is the judge. So clearly this is not a real thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Unless yeah. Tasha Steeles is, is actually a judge somewhere down in Atlanta. <laughs> So, so this is this has got to be a wrestling thing. All right, never mind. So, so that was that was a, that was an unwanted detour. <laughs> All right. Let's uh, let's uh, wrap this one up. Any other wrestling news before we go? Oh uh, no, that pretty much uh, pretty much cleared up everything prevalent. I think. All right, well, if you're listening on the stream, we're going to do Make an Impact next. But if you're not listening on the stream, we're, we're, we're done for the night. Uh, this show, actually, I thought was going to end a lot sooner, and then it went a lot longer. So realnerdcorp.com, R-E-A-L-N-E-R-D-C-R-P.com. We're on Twitter, N-E-R-D-C-R-P. Marcus, you can be found on Twitter at Paradox Kid, P-A-R-A-D-O-X-K-I-D. That's me. You can also find him on his other podcast, The True Penny Show, over on Twitter at True Penny Show, T-R-U-E-P-E-N-N-Y-S-H-O-W. You can find me on Twitter at Chad Nerdcorp, C-H-A-D-N-E-R-D-C-R-P, and on Instagram at Chad's Photo. With all that being said, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for checking us out. Thanks for giving us a chance. We're going to be right back with Making an Impact. Uh, if you're on YouTube, be sure to click on the next video because it'll be there eventually. I think it's going up uh, probably Thursday. Uh, this this will go up. I think both shows will go up Thursday. But Yeah, there's, there's that. So, Marcus, take us home. Good night, me. Yeah, we're we're gonna call that one twenty six and thirty.